Hey guys, it's Ajay here, aka Waltzing Wizard, and today I'm going to be talking about an introduction to spins and twists. So I think this will be a really fun topic for a lot of beginners because uh, I think when they watch high level play, the biggest thing that you see after speed is the fact that they're able to manipulate the pieces exactly how they want them to go. And especially uh, when they're sort of twisting them into narrow passageways, it can be a little bit hard to tell what's going on. So I want to sort of go over each of these uh, types of twists to uh, you know, sort of figure out how, the, how those kinds of things work. So without further ado, here we are, spins and twists. So this is actually the second time I'm making this video because <laughs> unfortunately uh, my audio didn't work the first time, which a couple people probably saw. But all right, let's see uh, if I can do it just as well this time, right? So first of all, I want to talk about the SRS rotation system. Um, after that, I'm going to go through each of the pieces that are common to spin in this game and go over the most common ways to spin each of those pieces. And at the end of the video, I'm actually going to open up a JSTRS client and uh, try to demo some of the more common spins that you can see. Uh, so yeah, so the SRS rotation system, I talked about this a little bit in the intro to multiplayer Tetris uh, video. It's every single guideline Tetris uh, client uses SRS rotation system. And the important thing to note is that the I piece, the Z piece, uh, Z piece, and the S piece all have four positions, not two. So the I piece will spawn in this position. If you rotate it clockwise, it'll go here. If you rotate it counterclockwise, it'll go here. If you rotate it twice and you're in this position, then if you rotate clockwise, it'll go to here. Rotate counterclockwise, it'll go to here. What this means is that when you do some of the spins that require two rotations, the first rotation that you do in the air is actually going to be just as important as the actual uh, the actual uh, spin that you use to put the piece into whatever cranny that you're kind of trying to squeeze it into. Um, this is because you want to make sure it's in the right orientation. So for example, for an S spin, which we're going to see a little bit later on, the first rotation has to be clockwise because you need to go from here to here with the clockwise rotation. If you do the first rotation counterclockwise and go to here, then a clockwise rotation only brings you to this one, not this one, and so it won't actually work. Uh, you'll be able to see that a little bit later on. So let's start off with T-spins. So of course T-spin is the most common kind of spin that you'll be using in Tetris uh, just because it's the only type of spin that's rewarded in, with points in single player games and is uh, it sends lines to your opponent in the multiplayer games. So mostly you're going to see people use T-spin doubles uh, which is this uh, demonstration right here. So you can see that there's a little bit of an overhang and then you spin the piece in. In order for something to count as a T-spin, three of the four corners of the piece must be filled. So if we go back to the first thing, if we see this three by three grid here, each of these corners, three of them have to be filled at the final placement of the piece for it to count as a T-spin. Uh, it's important to note that the edges of the board count as corners. So for example, in in this spin here, if this was the edge of the board and there was like a floating block here, it would still count as a T-spin single. The other thing to note is that there are sometimes multiple ways to count T-spins. I think this is the common one that a lot of people start out with, but it can sometimes be better to do this one depending on the situation and uh, where exactly your spin is, just based on the finesse. right? Uh, finally, you can sort of combine a lot of these spins a lot of the time, and you can see some pretty crazy T-spin setups uh, if you combine them. For example, this is a polymer T-spin, and uh, as you can see, they can get pretty weird that it like teleports all the way from here to here, and it gets way weirder than this if you start looking up some of the videos online that people make. Um, so I'm not going to go super in-depth on T-spins in this video, it's just going to be the basics. I'm definitely going to make a separate video on T-spin doubles, a separate video on T-spin triples, and I'll go more in depth on each of these, but this is sort of an introduction to how you exactly do the spins. Next up we have Z and S spins. So I think these happen about as often as the I piece, uh, as the I spin, but uh, for some reason I end up doing them a little bit more often, so I'm going to talk about them first. So what's important to note here is that for this S spin, the first rotation that you do must be clockwise, otherwise this last rotation won't work. If you rotate counterclockwise in the air and then drop it, 
then even if you rotate correctly clockwise, this piece won't drop in the correct place. Uh, it's the opposite for this kind of spin. So, uh, so S spins and Z spins in this configuration would have to be two clockwise rotations for an S piece or two counterclockwise rotations for a Z piece. Uh, in this configuration, it's actually the opposite. So this one was two clockwise rotations, and the S piece in this configuration would be two counterclockwise rotations. Uh, the next kind of S and Z spin, which you see here, is a little bit uh, less common, but uh, I'll demo that one a little bit later. And uh, it's a counterclockwise rotation for a Z piece and a clockwise rotation for an S piece. So it's the same. Uh, it's the same uh, rotation as this first spin that I talked about. Um, this one's a little bit easier because you don't need to worry about the first rotation because the starting configuration for the uh, block is already the correct one. Next are I spins. Uh, this is mostly going to be seen in um, ST stacking. Uh, there's an I spin setup for ST stacking uh, that utilizes this one. I think. Uh, it's interesting because if you were to physically try to jam this piece into this hole and like sort of twist it around there, if it was a little bit like gelatinous or something, then you would try to rotate it counterclockwise. But the way to actually do the twist, because of where the center piece is and how the rotation works, is to uh, rotate it clockwise in this position. If it were on the other side and you were trying to rotate it down this way and the hole was on this side instead of this side, then you would have to rotate it counterclockwise to get there, so it would drop down like that. Um, I think that's a little bit unintuitive, but uh, you get used to it as you play. Uh, this rotation is a little bit less common. Obviously, you, you could have this as being o an overhang instead of just open, and it would still work. So I guess sometimes it's used, but it's not very common. Uh, it's used in a lot of exhibitions. Sometimes people will have a big zigzag pattern for eye pieces, and then they'll take the eye and they'll spin it all the way through the zigzags, right? And then finally, you can co combine these spins to make weird things like this happen, <laughs> uh, which I'll demo later on in the video once we get through all the spins. Uh, L and J spins probably have the most applications, but each of their applications are pretty uncommon. Um, I think the top two ones are the ones you're going to see the most uh, in that, like, it spins into this cavity, right? And uh, these usually don't take very much practice because uh, since there's four configurations for the L and J pieces, uh, it'll always be intuitive because there's only one way to fit it into the hole. And so you don't really need to worry about which direction that you're spinning it. Uh, one thing to note is that in this last spin, this overhang can actually be one higher and it'll still work. So the spins that I don't cover in this video, uh, I just don't think are that relevant. So you can do some cool stuff with 180 spins, which are possible in Jstris and Nelpomino, but it's technically not part of the guidelines, so I'm not really going to cover it. Um, in Tetris Best and Tetris Best 2, there's all sorts of crazy like teleporting that you can do where there'll be a cavity that's completely enclosed and there'll be a piece maybe outside and you can use a 180 spin or some other kind of spin and it actually teleports into there but again that's not guideline and it doesn't really happen in most multiplayer settings and so I'm not going to talk about it also polymer T spins are pretty complicated even in SRS and I didn't I talked about it a little bit on the, the T-spin slide but I'm not going to get super in depth on how those work just because those can get a little bit complicated Okay, so now I'm done explaining each of the spins. I'm actually going to try to demo some of them and go back through the slide. At this point, if you're the type of player who already understands how to do each of the spins just by looking at the diagram, you probably don't need the rest of this video. So goodbye to you guys. You can skip to the end. And uh, for those of you who maybe want a little bit more of a demonstration to go over each of the spins or maybe some of the harder ones, you can. Uh, you know, skip ahead to the ones that you want to see or just watch all the way through if you want to see me struggle to set up some of these <laughs> less common spins. So let's start with T-spins, right? So we'll go here. So this is just a regular JSTRS client. Uh, let's just set up a regular T-spin double first. Um, so I don't know, I'm not going to play particularly fast, I just want to show each of the spins. 
So of course I'm going to set it up in the usual way. And when I drop it, uh, first I'm going to not cancel the uh, the lock delay, right? So you see there was a little bit of a time in between the twist of the piece and when it actually locked in and cleared the line. Uh, I'm going to set up another T-spin double and uh, show you what happens when you cancel it because it can get a little bit faster that way. So if I just set this up real quick. All right. So this time when I drop it, I'm going to hit space as soon as I turn it. So it's here, turn space, right? So you hardly even saw the piece in the final configuration because as soon as I turned it, I hit space to cancel that. So you want to be doing that every time you do a twist um, or a T-spin or any sort of, uh, you know, fancy soft droppy spinny thing. <laughs> um, so let's see, uh, I want to show T-spin triples as well, right? So I don't know, let's exit out of this game. Uh, Let's show, yeah, okay, let's show like an actual setup, I guess, instead of, uh, instead of anything else. So this is like a common opening that sometimes you'll see, especially on uh, Facebook Tetris. Uh, I don't really use it much, as you can see by how uh, badly I'm setting this up. But you can see once it gets to this position, you can just spin twice, and that time I didn't do the delay cancel. This time I did. You can see the difference, right? Uh, yeah, you can even see one of the J spins here, but I'll, I'll do that again later. Okay, so that was demonstrations for T spins. Uh, what's next? Right, S and Z spins. Let's do the common one first. Uh, I'll do the Z one just because I think people mess that one up a little bit because they tend to rotate clockwise first and then try to rotate counterclockwise and it doesn't work. So let's do the Z one. Uh, how am I going to set this up? Something like that, right? Okay, so here, if I rotate it clockwise first and then rotate it counterclockwise, so even though the final rotation is correct, you'll see it doesn't actually work, okay? So let me set that up and I'll do it correctly this time. Okay, so from here I'm going to rotate counterclockwise and of course, you know, finesse so I can immediately put it there. And then when I uh, soft drop it, I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise and then cancel the delay. So that's how you want to be executing uh, a Z spin. And of course an S spin would be the same thing, but it happens, uh, you know, with two clockwise rotations instead of the counterclockwise rotations. All right, let's see. Uh, oh, should I try to do the fancier one? Yeah, let's do the fancier one. So, um, I don't know, I guess we can do Z again. What do I need? I need a L piece. I need an S piece. All right, cool. Uh, yeah. No, I need an L and a J. OK, let's do that. So, how am I going to do this? Something like that, right? Okay, so from here, oh, I already spun it here. <laughs> Let's put this one away and get a fresh one. So from here, all I need to do is soft drop it in, slide it uh, next to where I want to spin it, and then one counterclockwise rotation will do. So that's the fancier Z spin, right? And of course, S spin would work the same way, but with a clockwise rotation. All right, eye spins. Uh, I guess let's try to show this in the ST stacking setup, just because that's a common use for it. Oh, and we got a perfect bag for it too, how nice. So this is a pretty common setup you'll see uh, for ST stacking, uh, which I'm gonna make a whole separate video on. But for here, I need to rotate it clockwise in the air. If I did it counterclockwise, this wouldn't work, by the way, even though that puts it faster to the correct side of the board. And then when I drop it, I need to do it clockwise again. And then once again, I cancel the line clear. Or sorry, not the long clear, the lock, the piece lock. And so of course this would just go into like some typical SD stacking type thing, right? Which I already messed up, of course. Uh, yeah, so that's the I spin. Should we do the fancy one? The fancy one might take a little bit to set up. What do I need to do? I need it to be too high, and then I need an S there, and I need a J there. Alright, let's do it. So. 
This one's a little fancy just because it requires two different kinds of spins and you have to soft drop it in between, but that's okay. We'll do it. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't have held that. That's okay. Something like this. What do I need? I need a J, right? Yeah, so from here I can drop it and do this and then soft drop it and then turn it. And so that was the same spin that you saw in the demonstration. I just didn't fill in the bottom a little bit, but yeah. So that's the second kind of I spin. So that one used a uh, counterclockwise rotation to put it here and then a clockwise rotation to move it here. I could have done another counterclockwise rotation and I would have brought it to the second row, but I guess this shows the more extreme version of the I spin, so I demonstrated that one instead. All right, so let's do uh, L and J spins. <coughs> so this one's pretty straightforward to set up <laughs> because you just use the same block. <laughs> All right, so from here, this is pretty intuitive. You just put it in the correct place. It doesn't matter which way you rotate it to get there, although you should probably do the one that takes less key presses. And then from here, I'm just gonna rotate counterclockwise and then um, press spacebar to cancel the piece lock. Uh, let's just do the L version, just because that didn't take very long, so why not? Um, yeah. We can make it even more uh, extreme, I guess, by putting <laughs> higher walls. Alright, where's my next block? There it is. Okay, so from here I would rotate clockwise and then cancel the delay. Um, should we do a fancier one? Sure, let's do a fancier one. Let's do, let's do this one. No, let's do this one actually, but I think this one's a little bit more common. So I did the J version of this uh, when I demonstrated the T-spin triples earlier, so I'll do the L version now. So what do I need? I need an I piece and I need another L piece. All right, cool. So let's hold this one. Oh, <laughs> I didn't do that right, but that's okay. So if we do something like this, and then we don't really care about these pieces. Um, we can even build this higher, right? Yeah. And then I can drop this here, and then of course it'll take a counterclockwise rotation, and it slips right in. So that's how you do um, a little bit fancier of a L or J spin. Um, yeah, in general, these ones are pretty intuitive just because um, there's only one way to put it in the correct position. There aren't two ways that you have to pick. Uh, and once again, the overhang can be one higher for this last one. Uh, we could do that last one, I guess, if people want. Uh, no, it's okay. We don't need to. All right, so that was actually a pretty, uh, pretty short video. Um, next, I think I've covered most of the basics. Uh, of Tetris that people need when they're beginners. So I think from uh, now I'm going to start working on a lot of the uh, openings because I think that's what's going to that's going to be the maybe not the most efficient way to improve but it's going to be the fastest way in the beginning to improve just to get like a decent uh, just to get a deep, decent start in the beginning. Um, so I'm going to start working on that. If you want to test your spin knowledge, I recommend checking out uh, Tetris Belts. I'm going to put this uh, link in the description, but let's just go there right now. You can see what it's all about. So basically, this is a thing you can use to test your improvement as a player. Uh, you don't actually need to test for the belts. I don't think people use this much anymore, so I don't even know if you'll get a response. But if you just go through the requirements, um, so like for white belt, as soon as it loads, you have to be able to do a T-spin double, right? So that's like pretty simple, but as you get up higher, I think like at some point with green belt, you have to do a Captain Hook or something, or is that orange? Yeah, Captain Hook. So Captain Hook uses a lot of different spins, and uh, the good thing about this thread is it even uh, shows demonstrations for each of the setups that it requires for each of the belts. So, uh, you know, if we want to look at the Captain Hook, let's say, so you can see it starts with a T-spin triple, it's goes to a J spin and finally ends with a Z spin. So you can sort of see how each of these work. Um, 
this one's interesting. Oh, apparently it didn't load, but it shows the wiki for it anyway, so you can still check it out. Um, yeah, so you can check out any of these Fumins. Here's the DT Cannon. Uh, I'll probably make a tutorial on this one, but if you want to check it out beforehand, like this page is here. So I'll put this in the description. Uh, weeping, <laughs> weeping is an interesting one, uh, just because you can do like literally every kind of spin in it, depending on how you set it up, right? So you can see they're doing literally one of each. <laughs> so that's an interesting one. And yeah, so definitely check out this site if you want to sort of test your knowledge of spins and make sure you can do them all. I'll put that in the description. And yeah, I will talk to you guys next time. Great. See ya.